What's up, what's up, VCs, founders, and the Entree Pro Curious. You've made it, and you're here. It's Venture Daily with me, Peter Saddington. Smash the like button now that you guys are here. Make sure to tweet it out. Let other people know that you're listening to Venture Daily, the fastest growing daily show in all of venture media. We have an exciting show for you guys today. And the reason we have an exciting show, if I may say, uh, one of the reasons we have an exciting show is I'm trying something new. You know, you know, one of the things that I always, that I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to stay abreast. I'm just trying to stay up on top. I'm trying to stay in the know of what's going on when it comes to the venture capital world. And I found that a lot of people are interested in that too. And not only that, they're interested daily. They want to know what's going on in terms of venture deals. They want to know what's going on with big tech. And, well, some of them commute. And they love to listen to me every morning. So I love being a part of your morning, guys. I love being a part of your day. Stay tuned. We're going to have a great show. We're going to go over three news bits today. This is going to be exciting. We're going to go over three news bits today. We're going to go over California's privacy law. Some of you guys have heard about that, as well as Teen Mobile's merger with Sprint. And lastly, we're going to be talking about Apple. Apple and Tinseltown. Apple and Hollywood. And so I have this new, and I'm just going to call it for what it is. I have this new teleprompter. I'm going to be trying it out, guys. I'm really excited. I don't know why I'm so excited about this, but, you know, it's just one of those things. you gotta, you, you got to try stuff. You gotta try stuff. So we're gonna we're gonna get it ready here. We're gonna get it ready here. And yeah, let's begin. California's a privacy law is here. Speaking of state laws, as of Wednesday, Californians can find out what data certain companies have collected about them and even ask for it to be deleted. Axios Kia Kolacheva reports. Why does this matter? Well, California's Consumer Privacy Act covers residents of the most populous state, but it also has national repercussions. Some companies, like Microsoft, have already said they'll extend the practices required under the law to all their customers and users, and to other states have tended to follow. California, when it introduces new rules that don't exist on the federal level. The law applies to any company that has California-based customers and meets any of these criteria. And so you've probably heard some things in the tweeters in the world about people complaining about what's going on here with this new California law, this new California privacy law. Uh, but you know what? We still have to figure out how it's all going to work out. So what are the criteria that you have to meet? Well, the company has to have at least 25 million in annual gross revenue, has personal information on at least 50,000 devices and earns at least half of its money selling California consumers personal information. So how does this work? Well, the California Attorney General is in charge of enforcing the law, though AG Xavier Becerra's office is expected to only have limited resources to handle a limited number of cases per year. Companies that offer free services can't discriminate against consumers who opt out of data collection, though they may modify the service provided. So what's next? July 1st is the deadline for the AG's office to finalize regulations laying out exactly what companies need to do to stay in compliance with the law. Some businesses hope those regulations will settle questions around parts of the law they say are ambiguous, such as a provision that lets consumers block their data from being sold, the New York Times notes. Also starting in July, Californians will be allowed to sue businesses for certain data breaches, and the California AG will be able to start bringing enforcement actions. Californians may also get to vote in November on a ballot initiative that would expand these privacy rights. Well, it looks like the California privacy law is rolling out. I've been hearing from lots of people out in, of course, California about the tweeters and on the tweeters and people losing jobs, losing opportunities. I don't know. I'm out here in Georgia, guys. So you let me know in the comments below if it's affecting you and your thoughts about this new privacy law of California. We're not just having privacy issues around America and all of the privacy issues that we have talked about before, but now we have GDPR, we, now we have international law, and now we're getting state legislation around privacy. Are we trying to protect privacy too much to the point where it's becoming a burden? I don't know. You let me know in the comments below. Moving on, so Teen Mobile 
trial heads towards closing arguments. T-Mobile's legal battle with its consummate to consummate its merger with Sprint heads to closing arguments arguments this month, as Margaret reports from Axios. The companies are trying to convince the federal judge to tie up won't hurt the competition, thanks in part to a side deal with satellite TV company Dish. So why does this matter? Well, the state case, led by the New York and California state attorneys general, is the last remaining obstacle for deal for the deal after the Federal Communications Commission. The Justice Department and shareholders gave it the green light. So what happened? T-Mobile CEO John Laguerre Dish co-founder Charlie Ergen and dueling economists testified during the December trial as lawyers for the 14 attorneys general argued that the deal would reduce competition in the wireless market and lead to higher prices. The Justice Department cleared the merger after the wireless companies agreed to sell assets to Dish to enable it to enter the market as a new fourth nationwide mobile carrier. T-Mobile pledged not to raise prices immediately following the merger as part of its commitments to the FCC. But critics have argued that promise contains loopholes. Laguerre acknowledged during cross-examination that the company doesn't include the cost of devices on its rate plans. Ergen also faced questions from the attorney for the states about text messages from Justice Department Antitrust Chief Makan Delrim, arguing Ergen to reach out to his senator friends to contact FCC Chairman Ajit Pai in June. The FCC and a Justice Department teamed up on a December 20th filing, arguing that blocking the merger will deprive consumers, especially those in rural parts of the country, of the benefits of the merger. What's next? Well, each side will make closing arguments January, January 15th, which just passed, by the way, and the judge ruling sometime after that. Well, you know, whenever I hear arguments about that consumers are going to be hurt uh, because of these huge mergers, you know what? I, in my opinion, this is just my opinion, guys, but in my opinion, the reality is no one's ever really that hurt. I mean, let's, think, let's, let's, let's be honest, guys. No one's ever really hurt. Like none of these, none of these companies, I'm sorry about that. None of these big companies are ever, I mean, none of these consumers are being hurt. It's all about the big money guys. So let me know your thoughts on the merger. T-Mobile Sprint, is this going to give us more choice, lower prices, or is this just another way for them to, you know, fleece us? That's what they like to do. They like to fleece us guys. Last but not least on today's news bits, Apple bets big on Tinseltown talent. Wait, but Apple is so like mainstream and Apple's so mainstream that it makes sense that Apple would merge with Hollywood. You know, I mean, it's just the whole, the whole, you know, ho hoity toity, hooty fluity, like it makes a lot of sense to me. Apple's new streaming service is only beginning to take shape, but that's quite, what's quite, quite clear is the company's willingness to spend big for top Hollywood talent, as Sarah reports from Axios. So why does it matter? Well, analysts for years have predicted that Apple, with lots of free cash flow, would one day buy a content company like Netflix or HBO to fulfill its streaming ambitions. You know what you could do, Apple? You could just buy me out. Because I'm going to be, I'm part of the face of venture media. So you could buy me out if you want, Apple. You can always do that. Let me know. Let me know. Okay. <laughs> But Apple's recent investments in individual producers, actors, and directors suggest that Silicon Valley Titan is heading in a different direction. So what's driving the news? Well, former HBO boss Richard Plepler had secured a five-year exclusive deal with Apple to produce feature films, documentaries, and original series for Apple TV, a spokesperson confirmed to Axios on Thursday. Well, what's between the lines? The deal, which first reported by the New York Times, brings authority to Apple's fledgling content efforts and gives Plepler a powerful platform to wield his influence as a top producer and talent magnet. Quote, this is a watershed moment for Apple, aligning with Plepler and the team to make it abundantly clear of just how serious Apple TV's ambitions are, says veteran media analyst Rich Greenfield, a partner at Lightshed Partners. So, is it really that smart? Unlike some of its streaming competitors, Apple TV is being built almost exclusively for original t content. Its smaller, more focused catalog is starting to look attractive to Hollywood A-listers who worry about their work and getting lost in the shuffle of mega libraries at Netflix, Amazon, or HBO Max. So what's the bigger picture here? 
Plutler's partnership with Apple signals a new era for Hollywood brass in which they'll become attractive content creation and distribution partners for tech companies with deep pockets. Companies like Amazon and Netflix have notably opted to spend hundreds of millions of dollars luring top talent from traditional studies, studios to produce content for their streaming services instead of buying the con content companies outright. Yeah, well, but it's kind of early. But Apple's big investments have yet to turn into major commercial successes. The first major television show for Apple TV, The Morning Show, received mixed reviews despite its all-star cast, which include Reese Witherspoon, who's that? Jennifer Aniston, who's that? And Steve Carell, who's that? Reviews of the service overall suggest that Apple's investments in other programming from Oprah, as well as Sesame Street and Peanuts spin-offs, haven't helped the company establish a clear vision for the service just yet. So what's next? It's still to be seen whether Apple's big-time Hollywood investments in Hollywood honchos will pay off. Well, I, it just makes a lot of sense for me, guys. It makes a lot of sense for me that Apple would be connecting with Hollywood, Hollywood people. And let me tell you why. And it might, it might seem, seem a little like me poking at them a little bit here, guys. But I, I can tell you why. I can tell you why it makes sense that Apple is connecting with the Tinseltown folks, with the Hollywood folks. It's because Hollywood is so, Hollywood is so distanced from reality. I mean, let's be honest. The average Hollywood star has nothing in common with the average man, the average woman. They just, there's, 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 there's no connections. There's no connections. Uh, what was that one comedian during the, the one show? What was it? The, the, the atheist comedian? I, I forget his name. Guys, I don't watch. T I don't. Clearly, I don't watch TV and movies that much. But he, I remember he was uh, this comedian from the UK, I guess. Um, he was ripping into the Hollywood and saying, you guys, you guys don't have anything in common with the average man or something like this. It's true. And in some ways, it might seem weird to say, but it seems like Apple... Maybe Apple has gotten too big, too high up in its ivory tower. Maybe Apple just is no longer connected to the real world. And that maybe is why Apple and Tinseltown, Apple and Hollywood make a pair, make a, a match, just perfect. Because they're both, both parties are ridiculously aloof to what the real world is all about. Let's be, let's be intellectually honest, guys. If you have an Apple phone, you have a thousand dollar phone. Like, how did this happen? How did this happen? I remember when I bought a cell phone back in the day, it was like a hundred bucks. And that was expensive. That was, a, you know, a POS. It's a piece of shit. <laughs> but it worked. I don't know. Let me know in the comments below, guys. Let me know in the newsletter reply. Um, let me know if I'm, I'm off my rocker here. Is Apple still connected to the masses or if they lost it? And, and by Apple connecting with Hollywood, have they kind of just proven to us that they are no longer friends of the normies. They're no longer friends of people like you and I, the regulars. I, I'm sorry, I can't be a regular. I got a fucking race car in my house. <laughs> True startup story, guys. You got it. Your company just got seed round financed. Congratulations, you're going to the moon. But now you have to scale. You found great talent out in California, New York, Georgia, and even Eastern Europe. So what communications platform will you be using to ensure your international team is always aligned? Well, the answer is easy, slack.com for teams. We've used Slack for all of our previous startups and they've supported us in tremendous ways. And we wanna give them a thanks today for supporting vchunting.com. Did you also know that Slack is a great tool for personal use? Yeah, I use my own personal Slack channel to drop in documents, notes, to-dos, and follow-ups to ensure that my workflow throughout the day is right on course. I promise you, if you try out slack.com for personal use, you'll end up using it for your team as well. Go to slack.com to check it out. Welcome back to Venture Daily with me, Peter Saddington. I'm glad to just be a part of your day on the fastest growing daily show in all of venture media. If you want to make sure that you stay up to date with what's going on with me, guys, make sure that you follow me on tweeters at Angel Peter. Also, you can subscribe to our newsletter, Daily Hunt, The Daily Hunt, where I'm always dropping news that you can use, guys. And let's move on to our venture deals for January 21st, 2020, guys. We always want to know where the money is going, and we want to know where the money is flowing. We want to know where the money is going. 
It's always good. And I like these lists. You know I like these lists because they allow me to just read out what's going on. And I never read it ahead of time. So I'm always surprised, which is always fun. All Birds, a San Francisco-based maker of everyday wool shoes. Wool Shoes is raising up to $75 million in Series D funding, according to Fast Company. The round is being led by Bailey Gifford. Really? Wool Shoes. You know what? Is there a link for this that I can click on? Please, brother. All right. No, no link today. Bigfoot Biomedical and a... Um, Mil Pitas, a California-based developer of automated insulin delivery systems for people with type 1 diabetes, raised $45 million, $45 million in Series C funding. Congratulations. Tours by local, like Canada-based online marketplace for private tours, raised $33 million in funding from Tritium Partners. Congratulations. Lightnet, a Bangkok-based blockchain remittance company, raised $31.2 million in a Series A funding, also known as an ICO. Just kidding. They didn't do an ICO, guys. They raised legitimate monies. <laughs> and investors included UOB Venture Management, Seven Bank, and Unipresent Asset Hodlings. Dr. Crono, Inc., a Sunnyvale, California-based developer of health record platform for medical practices, raised $20 million in funding from Oryx Growth Capital. Not bad. Jolt, a London-based EdTech offering a flexible business school alternative, raised $14.1 million in funding. Balderton Capital led the round. Congratulations. Sensum, a Paris-based manufacturer of connected medical devices, raised $9 million in funding from Kerma Partners. Not bad. Our Capita acquired a controlling interest in Waste Harmonics, a Victor New York based provider of outsourced waste management and consolidation services. Financial terms weren't disclosed. Cobepa SA made an investment in Precision Orthopedics, a Maryland based provider of integrated orthopedic surgical care devices. Not bad. Saudi Aramco, the Saudi state oil giant, raised an additional $3.8 billion, that's a small amount of money, from exercising its green shoe option for a total raise of $29.4 billion from its IPO. $29.4 billion, guys, is that money even, does, I mean, when you get to that type of size of money, like, I don't know why this is shocking me right now, because I've seen billions and billions before, not personally, but I've seen billions and billions of dollars raised in these you know, these buyouts, these IPOs, these acquisitions and stuff. It's like, what do you do with all that money, honey? What do you do with all that money? Let me know in the comments below what you would do with 29.4 billion. Schrodinger Inc., a New Yorker-based predictive molecule discovery software platform maker for biopharmaceuticals, filed for a 100 million IPO. Not bad. And Dr. Suleiman Al Habib Medical Group, one of Saudi Arabia's largest private healthcare operators, is ramping up for its IPO next month. Bloomberg reports citing sources. Not bad. I guess they're ready to make that money. Nope. And that right there, guys, are your venture deals for January 21st, 2020. We always want to know where the money's going and where the money's flowing, right? Did you know that there's even more value than just audio or video? Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, at VC Hunting, and make sure to sign up for the VC Hunting newsletter, where you'll be able to get weekly news on venture capital, startups, founder stories, and the occasional wisdom extracted from Peter's brain. Go to vchunting.com to sign up. And now, back to the episode. Well, guys, welcome back to Venture Daily. And in today's final word, I just wanted to give a retrospective. I wanted to get feedback from you guys. It's very simple. Um, I don't, you can't see it, but I set up my new teleprompter here uh, because I've never actually used a teleprompter before. But let me give you a little bit of history. Last week, uh, it almost seems like history now, but last week I was out in Tucson, Arizona, which by the way, I haven't been there in a while and I really, really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed Tucson. It was just perfect weather out there. Yeah, it gets chilly at night, uh, but it was just really perfect. And who was I meeting with, you ask? Well, if you guys follow me on the tweeters at Agile Peter, then you'll remember that I was meeting with the Agile for All folks 
um, that the company that acquired my company back in 2014. And so I still work with them because I love training and I love helping and I love coaching up early stage startups and helping their founders crush it. And I love consulting and coaching with venture capital firms, many of you guys know. And so one of the things that I learned out there is how to use a teleprompter. We brought it, it's really cool because we have a mastermind group. We're bringing all these, all these excellent coaches and trainers of Agile together. And for me, my market, the area that I care about is the venture capital world and the startup world. And so one of the things that I was pitching to them was that we need to spend more time helping the VC world, helping the, the startup world. Uh, but anyway, when we do these retreats, so these are like four day retreats or three and a half days. When we do these three and a half day retreats, uh, we always bring in experts uh, to help us grow in some way. And one of the experts we brought in, her name was Ashley. Uh, she was a public speaker and she was uh, also a newscaster or an ex newscaster, but now she's a consultant. Maybe she still does it. Anyway, I don't remember. Anyway, she taught us how to speak and communicate more effectively using a teleprompter, which I've never ever done before. And so while I was there, I ended up going on Amazon. I ended up purchasing one, having it put it to put it together. Um, and 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 I, I wanted to try it. And I wanted to try doing some news bits with the teleprompter. So I'm learning a couple things. The first thing, first thing is is I need to do a better editing of the text that I'm reading because there's some stuff that you, you can't like, there's a lot of free flow that I, I like to do um, when it comes to just talking and communicating and pre-writing out all the text in terms of like a newscast worthy uh, segment is a lot different from free flowing or prose or, or just some bullet points, right? It, it, it needs to be kind of thought out. But the problem is, is that when I'm thinking it out on the text, it's constraining. And so I, I go off course a little bit. I go off the text a little bit. And you know, this, this teleprompter is scrolling. It's scrolling this text, guys. So it's one of those things where um, I get to, I'm, I'm learning. I'm learning the tech. Uh, but mostly, uh, anyway, all that to say, let me know. Did you like this better than me, you know, reading from a phone and having, you know, the, the text uh, on this side? Because I like that. I like that because it allows me to kind of deep dive into an article. But with the teleprompter, I can go through more articles in about the same amount of time, about three articles in the same amount of time, and they're smaller bite-sized chunks. So for this, today's final word, guys, I just wanna get feedback. What did you think about today's uh, first pass, first trial at using a teleprompter? I am going to be doing more uh, teleprompter uh, news bits in the future. I'm just gonna keep doing it in, until I cut, get the hang of it and get the feel for it and learn how to write better and learn how to communicate more effectively through it. I think it's fun. I think it's fun. I think it's, I th what, what I also like about it, I will say, what I also like about the teleprompter is it, it really allows my first segment of the show to be focused on really just tech news. Because if I'm going deep into just one article, um, that article can range from a tech article, what's going on in tech, to kind of founder-esque type of stuff, like how to be a better leader, um, how, to, how to raise, you know, not how to raise capital, but how to be a better leader, how to be a better person, a lot of self-education stuff that I don't know always applies to everyone out there because the audience audiences that I have are, right, founders, the entre-procurious, uh, venture capitalists, and technologists. And so it's, it's hard to... Um, if I stick basically just to the news, then it it allows me to not get into the gray area of, oh, you know, I'm not into the self-help, Peter. I just want to know what's going on. And so if I do use a teleprompter, it allows me to focus really on news, what's going on, venture deals, what's going on, and then final word, which is really should be maybe where my opinion is in all of this and, and giving you guys personal messages. So let me know. Let me know your thoughts on this first pass using a teleprompter. I was really, I was really excited to use it. I don't, I didn't do a great job, but it doesn't matter. The key is is to continue to execute, execute to learn, keep trying, and 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 improving over time. That is purpose filled work. That is purpose filled work. And I know where I'm going. I know where I'm going, guys. I hope you know where you're going in this next decade. I'm gonna be around here in the startup world and the startup game. For a, long, for a long time, and I, I'm gonna to continue to be here. And so this is one of those mechanisms that's gonna keep me in the game here. 
So I thank you guys so much for your feedback ahead of time. I know we're getting close to the end of today's show, which means a lot of you guys don't get to even listen to this part. So it's only the select few that get this far into the show and actually can give me feedback. So I'd love it. Leave a comment below. Your, your comments, honestly, guys, your comments is like life to me really is like it's not that i live off comments and i get some nasty ones now and again but it makes me feel good when i get some feedback so let me know guys thanks smash the like button subscribe join do all the good stuff let the world know about venture daily help me out and i'll see you guys tomorrow